For our third example, we're going to look at multi-response questions. So that is, you ask a participant to tick all that apply. So here's an example. We're asking for a participant's mode of transport. So how did you get here? Please tick all that apply. Now, what happens if participants tick more than one option? So here I've got participants two and four. They both tick two options, one public transport and they came by foot, one public transport and they cycled. Can we enter data like this? What do you think? Well, if you said no, you'd be correct, but why not? Well, when we do statistical analysis, we should only have one piece of data per cell. That means one response per cell. So how do we enter the data then? Well, what we have to do is we have to consider each of these options as a separate variable. So that means hybrid electric is a separate variable foot is a variable, or they walked, sorry, they cycled is a variable, public transport is a variable, car taxi, and other is a variable as well. Now, when we come to code it, we need to code it as ticked and not ticked. Typically, I code this as zero and one. So zero means it's not ticked, one means it was ticked. So here's some example data. I've got my participant IDs on the side, I've got all of my options across the top because they are my variables and I have my responses. So for hybrid, if a participant ticked it, I would give it a one, which is for a yes, and that means they do drive a hybrid or electric car. No means they don't. Similarly, foot means they, did come, they didn't come by foot. Yes means they did. Now for other, it's slightly different. No, which is a zero, means that they did not indicate an other option. And then I code all of the other responses. So if they put scooter, it means they came by scooter or, or motorcycle, but I want to code them. So for example, um, my yeses and nos I know are zeros and ones. My other options, no is zero, scooter is one, motorcycle is two, and I would number as many other options as participants indicated. It doesn't really matter what order they're in. Now you might wonder why not create a separate variable for scooter and motorcycle? Well, I didn't give the other participants that option. So I shouldn't be putting them as separate variables. I'm just going to leave them as the other option. Now if, for example, scooter, maybe that's a really popular option. A lot of people came by that and I didn't put it as an option on my questionnaire. That was probably my mistake. If that was the case and I had lots of people saying scooter, I might consider putting it as a separate variable because it should have been on the original questionnaire. But typically speaking, it's good practice to just have it as another option. Now our data is ready to be entered into SPSS. Okay, so let's have a look at how we might enter this. I'm just going to enter the first variable, which is hybrid electric car. I'm going to call it hybrid. And I'm going to change the decimal places to zero. And I need to give it a good label. So I'm going to call it came by hybrid electric car. I do need value labels because it's categorical and I've given it codes. So I've used zero to mean no, not ticked, and one to mean yes, it is ticked. Now you can call this not ticked and ticked. It's up to you. I'm just writing yes and no for simplicity. Go ahead and click OK when you're done. Again, I'm not going to do anything with missing values, but I do need to identify the level of measurement. Yes and no, there's not really any order to this, so this variable is going to be nominal. Let's go to our data view and enter some data. So one, we can see hybrid cards weren't that popular. Um, I'm going to show my labels and I can now see I've got yes and no. In some of the other videos, we're going to look at the other data types.